Hello world and welcome to Striking Discord. I am Tim and today we're going to talk about this mysterious object that is floating out in deep space, maybe orbiting a star. If you haven't heard about this, it's circulating on various news feeds, it's on Facebook. So let's talk about this. So in order to understand more about this mysterious object, first we need to know a little bit about the spacecraft that discovered it. That spacecraft is called the Kepler spacecraft, sometimes called the Kepler Space Telescope. Uh, it was launched in 2009 and is orbiting in our solar system, and its function is to search for and hopefully find potentially habitable Earth-sized planets. So interestingly, the only actual instrument that's aboard the Kepler spacecraft is a photometer. And a photometer is just an instrument that measures intensity of light. And Kepler's photometer measures intensity of light coming from deep, deep in outer space. So you might ask, how does an instrument that only measures intensity of light help us discover actual physical planets out in deep space? Well, I can answer that question with a flashlight, with a K-cup taped to a pencil, and with a lightless room. So, here we have a star orbiting on the edges of our galaxy, and the photons of this star are being picked up and interpreted by the Kepler spacecraft. Now, if a planet is orbiting this star, and it happens to pass between the star and the Kepler spacecraft, the light diminishes. As you can see, the light fluctuates as the object passes in front of the light source, and the Kepler spacecraft interprets those fluctuations. And if those fluctuations occur in regular intervals, uh, say once a year or once every nine months, uh, or once every two years or five years, then it can be assumed that that object is an object that's orbiting that star and could potentially be a planet. And then based on the amount of fluctuation of light, scientists can determine if that object is Earth-sized and is an Earth-sized planet. So, getting back to our mysterious object. One of the stars that the Kepler spacecraft has been receiving information from is called KIC 8462582, and it's about 1,500 light years away from Earth. Now, KIC 8462582 is located between the constellation Cygnus and the constellation Lyra, but unfortunately, you cannot see it with the naked eye, even on a dark night. Now, the Kepler spacecraft has been recording information on this star for, uh, for five years, actually since 2009 when the Kepler spacecraft was launched. But we're just now getting information about it because a group of scientists have just recently published uh, a big article about these strange anomalies. One of these scientists, Dr. Boyajian, uh, has recently published this article talking about some specific anomalies that they've been receiving from this star. And what those anomalies are is that, as we talked about before, as objects pass in front of a star, the light fluctuates. Well, this star in particular has given some very strange light fluctuations. So according to this journal, the Kepler spacecraft did record some non-periodic dips of light intensity of inconsistent sizes, but it also recorded two massive dips that are apparently repeating every 750 days or about every two years. So one of these dips lasted for an entire week, which, when compared to the normal duration of these dips in light intensity, uh, is a really long time, and it's been really puzzling scientists as to what has been causing this. If we were to use the flashlight demonstration again, instead of just that K-cup passing briefly in between it, you would imagine the light fluctuating or dimming for an extended period of time, much longer than most planets would create. So Dr. Boyajian has even said in the journal that when they initially got these findings, that they assumed that it was some sort of bad information that they had received. But after checking everything out, it turns out that the information, the data is valid. So now let's finally talk about what this mysterious object is that's orbiting this star. There are currently a couple different theories going around the scientific community. Um, but unfortunately for all of you believers out there, the most commonly accepted explanation for this light fluctuation is actually a comet that has broken up and produced a large cloud of comet dust that is orbiting around this star. Another theory is that uh, an asteroid field has recently been caught in the orbit of this star and is causing, subsequently, these fluctuations in light. However, 
What I'm sure most of you want to hear is that there are also theories that this light fluctuation has actually been caused by some sort of alien megastructure, some huge structure that has been built by an advanced alien civilization out around this star that is orbiting the star but is large enough and wide enough that it's blocking light from the star for such extended periods of time. Hypothetical megastructures such as a Dyson Sphere have been talked about in science fiction for decades. In fact, a Dyson Sphere, uh, although named after uh, Freeman Dyson, was actually originally written about uh, by a different author in an old science fiction novel called Star Maker. And what a Dyson Sphere is, is essentially uh, a solar system sized metallic sphere that would completely surround and envelop a star and would subsequently absorb and utilize 100% of all of the energy that that star gave off. Now, even though an alien civilization is not the most likely cause of this light fluctuation, what's interesting to think about is that KIC 8462582 is 1,500 light years away from us, which means that if these light fluctuations are coming from some alien technology, what we're seeing now happened 1,500 years ago. So that means that if there was 1,500 years ago some alien civilization out there, that now they either no longer exist or they're 1,500 years more advanced than they were from what we're seeing right now. In the coming days, we might find out a little bit more information uh, about this light anomaly, uh, but we probably won't know more until 2017 because uh, this anomaly won't pass in front of the star again until then, uh, and we won't be able to get any more uh, results interpreted until that time. So feel free to believe whatever it is that you want to believe about what's causing these fluctuations in light, uh, but I also encourage you to go out there and read more information. Uh, the journal that Dr. Boyajian wrote is actually online. It's called Planet Hunter X, KIC 8462582, Where's the Flux? Uh, and it's available online. If you just Google that name, uh, you'll find it on there. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully you learned something that you didn't already know about KIC 8462582. Feel free to leave a comment. Let me know uh, if there's something that I didn't include in this video that I should have. If you have any questions about what I've talked about, feel free to ask and uh, give a like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Striking Discord.